Um, a lot of other issues to talk, to talk about. There was a special election in Missouri yeah. this week, which you've written about, which um, continues a very encouraging trend. So, yes. So Tuesday night, um, Missouri held a, a special election for four state legislative seats uh, that were all controlled by Republicans. Republicans maintain control of three of the seats, but the fourth one was— Even though Democrats did yeah. better in each of those races right, than, right. than they have in the past. They right. increased the vote share in each of those districts by double digits, I think. Whoa. Uh, and then in the fourth district, um, a 27-year-old man named Mike Revis, I believe, uh, mm -hmm. who works for Anheuser-Busch in Missouri, uh, ran as a Democrat and won a district that had voted— uh, for Trump in the 2016 election by a 28 point margin, I think. So Democrats flipped it and flip, flipped it big time. And, you know, people are taking this as a sign of encouragement, especially because there is such a dire need for Democrats to flip uh, state legislative seats. They've seen they've seen, you know, 900 to 1000 seats that were Democratic held go to Republicans over the course of the past eight years. and Un Under Barack Obama. Under Obama. When the Democratic Party was asleep at the switch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so this is the 35th seat that Democrats have flipped from Republican control in the past since January 2017, since Trump became mm -hmm. president, um, which is an encouraging sign. That said, there's still a long, yeah, long right. way to go. Right. But the fact that since since he became president, thirty five seats is uh, is you know, it's um, it's a it's it's it, not nothing. It, it's part of a blue wave. No, it's a, you and, think? It, and it yes, and it also shows because it's Oklahoma, it's mm -hmm. Iowa, it's Missouri. You know, look, it's Doug Jones in Alabama, it's Washington mm -hmm. State. It's happening all over, mm -hmm. and it also shows, as you pointed out in your article, that and we've talked about here. Democrats are running candidates in every single district, even where people mm -hmm. said they didn't have a prayer. Okay? Mm -hmm. So they're re recruiting candidates at city council level, state mm -hmm. legislative level, Congress, Senate, and uh, and it's paying off. Mm -hmm. It's paying off. Yeah. Look, look in Virginia, uh, how, how many seats they picked up. Mm -hmm. Again, the last time around, there were a lot of those districts didn't have erased mm -hmm. because no democrat stood up to run mm -hmm. yeah and you're I not going to win if you don't have <laughs> right that that's the takeaway from missouri is you can't win with nobody with, with nobody in the race and <laughs> yeah. um what we've seen is in a if you know a state legislative special election in missouri in a red district can vote for a democrat you should be running candidates everywhere in the right. reddest of districts absolutely in the south I think my worry is that some Democrats may have written off a lot of red districts because the data shows that right, they're course. unwinnable. No, no. But, always. That's well, always yeah. been the case. But yeah. we're, what we're seeing now is the data and what we've seen time and time again since November 2016 is that the data can be wrong. You're also seeing that Trump's base, Trump's support is eroding. Mm -hmm. Maybe not across the board, but, but when you give them a good alternative— mm -hmm. Well, people starting to see through this guy. So, um, you've also, uh, in terms of uh, on the political front, um, we saw something very unusual this week. That usually at this time, like two years ahead of time, everybody from Bernie Sanders to Elizabeth Warren to Joe Biden, uh, who who were talked about possible candidates for twenty twenty, mm -hmm. they all give the political answer. No, no, no. I love my job now, and I'm just focusing on my job now, and I'm focusing from running for re-election. Mm -hmm. Julian Castro from Texas. Well, he's not constrained by a little being different a approach, right? Right. So, so this week, Julian Castro, who was HUD secretary uh, in the Obama administration and was mayor of San Antonio before that, said he would definitely be interested in running for president. I forget the the exact phrasing. But well, he, said, oh, he said he has every every interest or something. I have every interest mm -hmm. in running. Yeah, so that makes it pretty clear. Part of the clear. process of figuring out whether I'm going to run is going to listen to folks and feel the temperature of the voters. He said that while he's on his way to New Hampshire, mm -hmm. right? So he said right up front, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I'd like to run. What is he doing now if he's if – he's, 
Unclear his, to me. Um, his brothers in Congress. Yes, his Joaquin. brother Joaquin Castro. They're twin brothers. Um, grew up in San Antonio. Their mother was a big uh, political activist in the San Antonio area area when they were growing up, and they've both obviously gone into politics. And um, his brother Joaquin represents Texas in the House. How can you tell them apart? <laughs> Peter, you were in San Antonio. I was, yeah. I was in San Antonio when he was running for mayor. I actually left. Oh, really? Yeah, I, I, I left San Antonio uh, to mm-hmm. come work for, for Bill. Mm-hmm. And the best Julian Castro story of all time is that when he was running for mayor, <clears throat> they had a big river parade down on the river walk in San Antonio. And instead of floats on the street, they do barges, right? So it's just oh, these, these yeah. little boats float down the, the, the river. And... Julian Castro was there, waving to the crowd and saying hello and vote for me and running all this type mayor. of stuff. Running for mayor of San Antonio. And the yeah. thing is, it turns out later, he had actually enlisted his brother, his twin brother, to go oh, and campaign right. for him as, as him. him on the barge. And one of the news stations there actually picked up on it and said, apparently, they're, I mean, they are identical twins, but they're... There are ways to tell them apart. Mm-hmm. And one of the news stations picked it up and was like, hey, I'm not sure that this was you. And he had to come forward and say, like, yeah, you know what? I actually had my brother go out, <laughs> go out and campaign as me. Oh, my God. It's the greatest. And, like, he got a lot of grief for it. But you know what? I love the idea. 